Welcome back to another Project Rebirth review. Today we're going to take a look at the NECA King Kong vs. Godzilla, Godzilla figure. Here's a look at the front of the box. The front of this package opens up. There's some Velcro right here. And opening it up, on the left hand side here, we can see an image of the Godzilla figure with a background of Mount Fuji. And on the right hand side, a clear window pane where you can see the figure of Godzilla. Here is the left side of the box and the right side, which is identical to the left side. And here's a look at the back of the box, which shows the figure along with its heat ray blast accessory. And on the bottom, there's a description of the battle between King Kong and Godzilla. All right, let's get this Godzilla figure out of the box. All right, here's a quick look at the inner packaging before I take it out all the way. Uh, it's secured with ties here and here. But you can see the tail of Godzilla in the back here. And here is his heat breath. And it's kind of nice that this uh, backdrop could be folded out for uh, perhaps toy photography. Although I imagine you'll get creases at the folds. But uh, uh, perhaps that could work out uh, quite nicely. Also inside the packaging is this uh, um, assembly instruction for the tail. They suggest that you put the tail in warm water for about 20 seconds before attaching it to the, uh, the ball joint. And here's a quick look at the backdrop just by itself. All right, so here's Godzilla out of the box. I'm really pleased with the way this figure looks. Uh, I do want to say with regard to the, the tail assembly, that took a hell of a lot more than 20 seconds. And ultimately, um, first I tried 20 seconds in hot water, uh, then you know 40, then a couple minutes. Uh, really, that tail did not want to go on that, that ball joint whatsoever. Finally went up and, and hit it for quite a while with a, a hair dryer on hot. Um, you know, and ultimately even that took a while, but I, I got that tail on. But uh, uh, certainly be careful because uh, nothing would be more disappointing than breaking a figure right out of the box. All right, and with regard to his flame breath, if you take a look at the back of the figure's throat, if you can see it, there is a hole in the back there. And this just inserts into that hole and it will stay in place. Let's take a 360 look at Godzilla. Let's take a look at articulation. The figure's head can rotate all the way around 360 and the mouth can open and close. It looks like the figure should bend here at the elbow if you can see the cut right there. But mine um, really just has not moved at all. Those two elbow joints seem pretty frozen. I've tried to work on them a little bit but I got a little frustrated and I've stopped with that. Rotates at the wrist. There's a, a cut there to bend inward at the wrist. Again, not the, the greatest movement there, and I think this just needs to be worked in a bit more. And then right here across the palm is a cut line where it can fold forward. And there you do get a really nice um, you know, grasping fist, uh, or I guess not a fist, but a, a grasping hand from Godzilla. His arms can uh, really go down from the sides and rotate out the shoulder and rotate all the way around. 
There's a cut here for movement at the upper tor torso. That's somewhat limited, but not bad. And then a cut at the, the knee area that can rotate out side to side. And it can rotate here at the foot. And then moving the legs up and down, instead of kicking up, it kind of kicks outward, you know, like that. Uh, but again, not bad. The tail has a lot of hinge points. The main one, of course, is this ball where we put the uh, um, put that joint together. But even here, in the tip of the tail, there's little points of articulation where the tail can be moved left and right and side to side, you know, or strained all the way out. So a lot of nice movement and flexibility with that tail. And here's Godzilla with a figure that has a lot of sentimental value for me. It's an Ultraman figure that I bought in Japan when I was traveling there, I think in either 1988 or 1999. Found a toy shop that uh, had a ton of, uh, like a whole wall of different Ultraman figures. I only bought this one and, you know, of course, I wasn't, I was familiar with the, the show Ultraman from the States and, you know, pretty much the Ultraman looked like this one and they had so many different ones to choose from. Kind of wish I'd bought some more, but uh, this lucky guy made the trip back to the States with me. And here's Godzilla alongside the much larger Unchained Armor Superman by McFarlane Toys. Alright, so here's my final thoughts with regard to this NECA King Kong vs. Godzilla Godzilla action figure. You know, Godzilla was a big part of my childhood. I loved watching uh, Godzilla monster movies and Gamera and that kind of thing, and uh, as well as other TV shows like Space Giants and uh, Johnny Sacco and his flying robot, and of course Ultraman. And uh, so I was very excited to buy and purchase this figure. And, uh, you know, I really see no downside to it whatsoever. <laughs> Normally I go through uh, pros and cons. I can't think of a single con. This is a great figure, and I think you should buy it. Uh, videos coming up, so um, I don't have them out of the box yet, so I can't show you comparison. But please stay tuned because I have reviews coming up for a King Kong figure as well as a Gamera figure. So please stay tuned and watch those videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Project Rebirth review. Thank you.